So far, we have been learning about configurations in the Skaho universe, and we are now at the point where we can assume that you will end up having great custom configurations and you want to share them with your friends or with yourself, because you may have more than just a single controller in your infrastructure where you want to move this configuration to. So in terms of managing configurations, you have something to learn, and this is what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's move on to it. We have a configuration for this PDC Pro, and I am going to move it to this guy. So I have two PDC Pros, but I want them to share the same configuration. So this is kind of my master now. I made a configuration for this one, and um, that's the one you see right here. So I go to Manage Configuration first because I want to name it. So I'll, I'll type in my master configuration. And I could also uh, make a description for this configuration about how great it really is. Save. All right. So in order to share this configuration with other users or myself, all I need to do is to press the share link in this interface. OK, so I press share and then we get a subscription ID. So it's 9826, okay? 9826, keep that in mind. Because what I'm, I'm going to do now is disconnect this controller. Just move it over here. Remember, we are working online, so this interface is still um, available. Then I'm attaching this one. All right, yep. And um, now I will go to my firmware application. I can uh, find the firmware application for my controllers right there. Yes, so uh, I will go to online configuration for this controller. We'll see what, what hits us here. Uh, we can see this controller is currently also set up with, uh, well, no, new tech cameras. We have Panasonic cameras here. So it's uh, set up to something entirely different. All we need to do now is to go to, let me see, I think the advanced tab. Yep. Or is that actually true? Uh, manage configurations. It is true. In in this in this dialog, you type in the subscription ID of the configuration we just made. So you put that on a post-it note, stick it to your whiteboard, and have it ready for whenever you want to subscribe to a configuration. Go, and what you see now is that I pulled in my configuration. It is in this list right there, my master configuration, make a description, blah, 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 blah. So you can unsubscribe from it again. You can uh, also set it as active. That is what we're going to do. So I set as active. Now this configuration is my active configuration. And when I go back to controller configuration here, you can see that in this list of uh, configurations, my master configuration is the currently selected one. All the others, those, um, the, the blue ones are all the default configurations you found on the inlay card with your controller when you received it. The uh, black configurations will be your user configurations local for this controller. But the green one down here is the one that we just subscribed to. So the exciting thing is to get this onto that controller. So the, the thing is, if we close down this window and go to online configuration, just like for any other default configuration, you'll see it appear in this list right there. And now you can set other IP addresses than the one that were actually a part of this one. So let's assume that we actually had an ATEM switcher on this address. It, it turns out that we do, so I, I could do that. And we would want to control uh, cameras on a different IP range, set a static IP. We can do that, save this configuration. And now uh, I press, sorry. And now I press check for updates. So it's, it's going to generate a new firmware based on that configuration. Now, while the firmware is generating, so what does it mean to subscribe? Did I really just copy it or did I actually subscribe to it? You did subscribe to it. It means that if I go to my master controller and change this configuration over here, then later updating this controller will automatically take those changes over. I think that's quite interesting. So. Um, it means that if I came up with a cooler or better way of selecting auxiliary output on the ATEM switch as I did in the previous videos, then that would be instantly installed on, on, on all the other controllers subscribing to it. It's now writing the firmware and we should in a moment be able to confirm that this is in fact the case. 
that it's gonna boot up and connect to ATEM switches and so forth. Now, um, there was one thing that I wanted to mention here, and that is what happens if I now change this subscribe configuration? If I go to the advanced tab, and as we just did on that one to create this configuration, if, if, I, if I go to master configuration and, and click a button and, and make a change, uh, remove actions, uh, uh, change the title of, of this menu, save settings, what happens is that the subscribe configuration is now copied in a modified form only for this controller and you see that it now changed into user configuration number five. So it's very important to understand that if you subscribe to a configuration, then as soon as you change that on the controller which subscribes, it's gonna make a local copy. And if you wanna go back to the subscribe configuration, you will find it in the list right there. So you can always change back, that's not the thing. It's just important that you understand that any changes you make beyond the IP address that I just set up will actually have this effect. So, um, we are now booted. We can still connect to the cameras and control those. Not this one though, because that camera is probably in a different room. It seems that, oh, it's not even, actually not even connected to camera two. I don't know, it's probably still searching for it. But I, since I popped uh, up the IP address by one notch, it's now starting with this camera as camera one, which is why it's um, um, lighting up and being controlled. All right, so that was success in terms of showing you how we can share configurations, make subscriptions, subscribe to stuff, what happens when I change, and um, all these things. Um, if you wanna make new configurations completely, that is of course naturally embedded right here, so there is something called new, and when you choose new, then you have a completely blank configuration. We'll be doing that in the next video, creating a configuration for ATEM switches, so let's just leave it for that now. But New configuration is named number six. We can also copy configuration. So let's take the master configuration we just had and then choose copy. Means that it's, it's now gonna make a copy of this one, call it user configuration number seven, but otherwise it's, it, it has taken all the parameters that we just made. Um, yes. But the, the main point is anytime you take a configuration like a default configuration or a subscribed configuration, things that are read only to you, any change you make to those will of course create a new copy locally for your controller. Yeah. Okay, that is kind of everything we want to cover in this video. So I'm looking forward to showing you how we can start from scratch with a completely blank configuration for an ATEM switcher.